Howdy. In this video what we're going to do is we're going to talk about telescoping series. Now before we get into how to solve telescoping series, it's important to be able to recognize what they look like. And so seeing what they look like, they'll look like a sum of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, or maybe the sum of sine of 1 over n minus sine of 1 over n plus 1, or they might look like this. They might look like 1 over n times n plus 1. The reason this is a telescoping series is because you can apply partial fraction decomposition to the series in order to make it look like the other two. So telescoping series, you may be required to do partial fraction decomposition before you can actually start. Now these will be the easy partial fractions, okay? Uh, kind of like the one we did in that first easy example, that's what you should expect to see um, for partial fraction wise. It's not going to get that hard, but make sure you don't forget how to do partial fractions. Now let's talk about this process. So go ahead, pause the video real quick, jot this down so that we can talk about it. Now, the first thing that you're going to do when dealing with telescoping series is you're going to write out the first few terms, but the big key thing here is do not simplify. I'll show you what I mean by that when we get there. But write out the first few terms and do not simplify. Once you do that, cancel what you can. And whenever you do that, what this leaves you with, it leaves you with your partial sum. And remember the partial sum video is your SN that you can figure out, and like S3 is A1, 2, and 3, whatever. It's going to leave you with your partial sum. So if they ever ask you, uh, find the partial sum of this telescoping series, whatever you have left over after cancellations, that's your partial sum. And the last thing you want to do is if you want to find the infinite sum, then just take the limit as n goes to infinity of whatever you have left over. Okay? So let's run through an example. Let's take a look at this one. Say I want to find the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the first few terms, but I'm not going to simplify. What I mean by that is I'm first going to start off by writing a1. a1 is what I get when I plug 1 into n, and so it's going to be 1 minus 1 third. And I'm going to leave it as 1 minus 1 third. That's what I mean by don't simplify. Let's find a2. a2 is what I get when I plug 2 into n. And so it's going to be 1 half minus 1 fourth. Uh, let's find a3. a3 is what I get when I plug 3 into n. So it's 1 third minus 1 fifth. Okay, plus, uh, usually 4 is a good number, so let's do a4. a4 is going to be uh, 1 fourth minus 1 six plus you kind of get the idea and then a like infinity is what I like to call it that's just going to be 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2 okay so this is what I meant by writing out the first few terms but not simplifying the next thing I want to do is I'm going to cancel what I can so let's see what I can cancel well, check this I've got a positive one third and a negative one-third. So that'll cancel. Uh, what else? Uh, I've got a positive one-fourth right here and a negative one-fourth. That'll cancel. Had I gone on to a uh, a5, I've had a positive one-fifth right here and a negative one-fifth. That would have canceled. Had I gone on to a6, I would have had a positive one-six, negative one-six, and I recognize now that basically everything in the middle is going to cancel. Also notice something. Notice that whenever I cancel the one-third with this negative one-third, this one-fourth with the negative one-fourth, the positive one was to the right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that this is like the edge of the universe. There's nothing past this um, term right here. And so if I had a one over n, two terms earlier, I would have had a negative one over n. And technically, there would have been an uncanceled negative 1 over n plus 1, because if you notice, they skip two terms at a time. And so you have two negative terms at a time. This is the edge of the universe. There is nothing for that to cancel with, because these associated positive terms that would have been canceled would have been after that. And so what I have left over is my Sn is just going to be, uh, let's see, I'm going to have 1, I'm going to have 1 plus a 1 half, uh, then I've got this minus 1 over n plus 1 
minus 1 over n plus 2. And what this is, this would be the partial sum of my telescoping series. And so if I want to find the infinite sum, the infinite sum of my series, the last thing you need to do is simply take the limit. The limit as n goes to infinity of that given Sn of 1 plus 1 half minus 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. And when I plug infinity into these last two fractions, 1 over infinity, these both go to 0. Now be careful, though they don't always go to 0. In this case, they did. But they don't always. So make sure you take that limit to infinity. Anyway, so what I would have is 1 plus 1 half and then minus 0. And that would just be 3 halves. And this is how you deal with telescoping series.